Welcome in to Drew's Daily Diamond for Thursday, July 25th, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate of games. Let me know in the comments below what your MLB picks are for today, where you agree, where you disagree. Any questions, fire away as we'll hit some of them on today's show. Shout out to the VIP watchers firing away some questions on the last couple days. Smash that like button if you're liking the content as we got four day games, a couple night games to get into here, guys, on the Thursday slate. 12.05 Eastern, 9.05 a.m. Pacific. No waiting around here in our nation's capital. It's the Washington Nationals hosting the San Diego Padres. Final game of the series. Dylan Cease going for the Friars. Pat Corbin, the lefty for the Nats. Eight in the hook being the total. Padres, minus 175 to as high as minus 180 road favorites. Padres coming in 54 and 50 on the season, winning four straight games. Looking good as well on the Wednesday, uh, the slate. They, they've already scored 12 runs here, and that's against the lefty. Part of the analysis here in this game is the Padres have struggled a little bit more against lefties. They have a lefty-righty dichotomy, way more positive on the righty side. But they have been a lot better against lefties, so I'm not going uh, against them in this one, guys. Uh, the number's a little bit too high to be on the Nationals. But really, part of the reason I'm not going against the Padres is is Dylan Cease, their starter, back-to-back, -back, blanking the opponents in his last two starts, 21 strikeouts against the Guardians and the Braves. He's hot right now. He actually faced the Nationals earlier this season, went seven strong innings, nine strikeouts, zero earned runs given up, so he blanked them as well. I think he's going to have a solid start here. And Corbin, the lefty, going for the Nationals. Look, his full season numbers aren't great. You know, five and a half ERA. His last time out, a lot better. Six innings, just three hits, one earned with six strikeouts. And he did have a solid start against the Padres earlier in that same series, just giving up five hits over seven innings, three earned with a sub two FIP. So I actually think he could have a decent start here, guys. It's not one I love, not a best bet going to the clients by any means, but we have an eight and a hook as the total getaway day should be a quick one. I think this one finishes like 3-2, 4-1, something in that ballpark. So we'll go under eight in the hook, Padres and Nationals to lead us off. Heading to South Florida five minutes later, 12-10 Eastern, 9-10 a.m. Pacific. Baltimore Orioles at the Miami Marlins. Rodri Munoz going for the fish. Corbin Burns going for the O's. Also the last game of the series, and it's the Orioles' heavy favorites here. Minus 260 road favorites, seven in the hook being the total. You can see why Baltimore, great bet overall. They got Burns on the hill, 2-3 ERA, 116 strikeouts for the season. He did face the Marlins last year in his second-to-last regular season start. Went five innings, zero earned, two hits. Um, and it, it, it was so late in the season. If you're like, oh, why did he only go five innings? If you remember, they were heading to the playoffs, probably just kind of saving innings. Probably could have went further blank in the Marlins. I wouldn't be surprised if he does it again here. Now he's up against Munoz, high prospect guy for the Marlins, 24 year old Dominican born pitcher. He's a guy throwing 95, 96 miles per hour. If you look at his overall season stats, not great. Just one in five over a five ERA. He has been good. His last start was uh, was pretty good. I could see him having a decent start here, but it's not going to keep me off of the Orioles. Only way I would bet this one, guys, is uh, is on the O's. They've been the better lineup out of the break. They're good against righties. The Marlins, they've really struggled against lefties and righties. Bull both bullpens have been pretty good. So kind of lean towards the under, but even more so, let's go for the show here, guys. Baltimore Orioles will jump on the run line, kind of cut that uh, money line a little too expensive there. For our blood. So we'll go Orioles on the run line over the Marlins. Heading to the three o'clock Eastern hour up next, 12 noon Pacific. It's the Tampa Bay Rays and the Toronto Blue Jays. North of the border here with Chris Bassett going for the Jays, Taj Bradley going for the Rays. Total of eight, and it looks like the Blue Jays' slight home favorites, minus 110. We got uh, the Rays coming in with their 23-year-old pitcher, and he is hot right now. Bradley out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Since June 2nd, he has a sub-1 ERA. He's 4-1 in those starts, just two earned runs given up in 31 innings. He's a guy throwing hard, 96, 97 miles per hour. Bet on only for us. If you've been watching the show, we've been on him a couple times with some success. Not going to go against him here. And he's up against the Jays starter. In his last three starts, he's given up 12 earned runs, only lasting 16 innings with 20 hits. 
So he's been knocked around. He's also gone against the Rays twice this year, giving up seven earned and 10 innings in those two starts. So they've seen him pretty well. And a bullpen edge towards Tampa. Hey, I think we get the better team. I know they're on the road here, but low watermark right now in the overnight market, minus 102, risk 102 to win 100. That's on the Rays over the Blue Jays. Four o'clock Eastern hour up next, heading out west to the L.A. Dodgers San Francisco Giants game. It's Logan Webb going for the Giants. Clayton Kershaw, the lefty off the 60 day IL, making his first start of the season, commanding a minus 140 price tag at the opener, eight in the hook being the total. Giants not playing their best baseball right now, but they got Logan Webb on the hill, 3 5 ERA, sub 3 FIP. And since the All-Star break, he's only made one start in Colorado, so not much to go off of of recent. But he does have good numbers against the Dodgers, 13 innings, only two earned runs this season. So, you know, he's a fastball changeup guy, keeping the lineup off balance. They haven't seen him well. I could see him having another decent start here against the good Dodgers lineup overall. I mean, good. They're number one by uh, weighted runs created plus over the uh, full season. They do have some injuries on the offense, but they've been playing better baseball. As I'm recording this now, the Wednesday game's still going on, but the Dodgers have won five straight coming into that one. And I'm not a huge fan of betting on pitchers, even big name pitchers, a guy with a career like Kershaw, you know, heading to the Hall of Fame. But in his first start back, I usually pump the brakes on that betting on him. It is his first start off of the 60 day IL, and he's only made three minor league starts. And none of them, he's gone over four innings. So you know he's going to be on a pitch count here, not going deep into the game. And actually, when you dig into how he how he fared in the minors, not that it translates you know, f- fully to the major leagues, but in his last start in AAA, he gave up three earned and six hits in just four innings. So that was his last time out against AAA bats. Now he's, now he's in the show. I'm actually going to kind of use that to our advantage here, guys. I think uh, the Giants getting a plus price near – plus a dollar and a quarter as a sizable uh, underdog here. We'll jump on Logan Webb, listed starter, and that's the Giants over the Dodgers. Heading to the night slate, up next, Atlanta Braves, New York Mets. Key NL East battle here with the two and three in the standings, and the Mets are starting to reel in the Braves here, guys. Braves not playing great baseball. They're just, what, eight, seven games over 500 here. And this one is is late to be posted for a number from the sports books as Chris Sale would just was just listed as the starter. This will be his first start in, what, 11 days because uh, postponements, the all-star break, things of that nature. Now, his numbers overall, sub-3 ERA, 2-2 FIP, he's been great. I mean, usually we'd look to be betting on him. And not that we're not here. Uh, I think he could have another great start. But the, the Mets lineup has been good against lefties, so I don't want to put too much of a plus price going against us on the Braves, even though he hasn't let up more than two earned runs in his last seven starts. So he's up against Severino here for the Metropolitans. Solid numbers overall, a couple blowups throughout the season. But even more so, guys, and this is still pending right now, if we do get kind of that eight in the hook, something of that nature is a total I would actually look towards the under here. I mean, this Braves bullpen has been pretty good. Uh, I think the Mets bullpen will be better as the season goes goes along. And Severino and Sale, two good starters here. So, you know, it's total pending right now. There isn't one out as I'm doing the show in the overnights. But I would look, and uh, as long as it's eight or higher, got that circled to bet it in towards the under in City Field. Got one game left. Do want to answer some questions here, guys. Also, uh, let you know. It's $5 customer appreciation day at wagertalk.com. I do have a big bet up, normally $25. You can get it right here for uh, $5 today on Thursday. So check that out, wagertalk.com. Drew Martin, all plays discounted to just $5. And uh, we got the college football NFL packages up. If you buy one of those, you get MLB for free through the World Series. So check that out, guys. Also, smash that like button. Comment below if you're liking the content. Answering some questions here. SFC Bites. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Let me know if I'm not pronouncing them right, guys. But um, shout out to you, man. He's got a question in terms of pitcher and catcher communication with the pitch comm. Does the catcher speak softly so the batter can't hear him? Actually, SFC Bets, it's a great question because, I, I mean, it's a big part of the game right now. And usually you'll see the catchers 
wear the pitch com on their either their shin guard or or on their arm. And no, he's not speaking into it. He's just pressing buttons. So what I've seen in my research is they have a volume button and then a bunch of buttons on what the uh, what the pitch would be. So like middle in uh, fastball or, you know, curveball down, things of that nature that he's shooting out to the pitcher just by pressing a button. And the pitcher has a speaker right under the brim of his hat where it just goes right into his ear. And it has, I believe, four languages. Uh, I'm not sure if it's every language, but it's English, Spanish, Korean, and Japanese. And that's how they communicate. And it also goes to the players in the field as well. So it makes it go, the game go a lot quicker. You know, now that we have the pitch clock and they don't have to deal with signs, it's less sign stealing, things of that nature. I think it's good for the game, but uh, obviously it's taken some learning some learning curves here, but uh, yeah. Hey, welcome to 2024. It's been around for what, I believe a year, two, maybe even three and uh, great question. And that's to, to my knowledge, how it works. So it makes the game go a lot quicker. Shout out to Brent Hall asking about the NFL opening line report. When is that going to be starting? We got Monday, August 5th at 10 AM Pacific circle. So uh, NFL preseason NFL opening line report, not too far away. And we'll be hitting it each and every Monday throughout the NFL season. So, so come and join us on that. And Brent, shout out to you, man. Thanks for the question. Guys, feel free to fire away in the comments below. Your MLB picks and any other questions, I'll answer them as the show goes on. All right, last game for Thursday, guys. And this is the, the epitome of a degenerate special. It's kind of the solo West Coast game here. So a lot of tickets going to be written on it. And it's the Oakland A's and the LA Angels, 938 Eastern, 638 Pacific start time. Ross Stripling going for the A's and Kenny Rosenberg, the lefty, going for the Halos. Near pick on price tag, I am seeing the, the Halos at most sports books, minus 110 home favorites, total of nine. Oakland comes in 41 and 62. They just lost uh, to the Houston Astros, but they have been playing better baseball, talking about the Athletics winning five of their last seven. Now they have the 34 year old Texas AM graduate, Ross Stripling, on the hill. He was just activated from the IL and it, just a 15 day IL, but still with the all star break, he's made three minor league starts. He's gone eight plus innings with only two strikeouts in those eight innings. So that's worrisome if you're looking to be betting on Ross Stripling in the Oakland A's, at least in the first five. Also, before that, before his IL stint, he had over a six ERA in Major League Baseball. So he's not a guy I'm looking to bet on in this situation. Kenny Rosenberg, if you haven't heard from him, he's a 29-year-old Cal State Northridge grad. His last time out was actually against the A's. He had a decent start, four innings, one earned run given up. Not a whole lot of sample size on this lefty, but with that past performance, I think he could have a decent start. And the LA Angels, hey, they've been good to us. We've been following along, cashing some plus price tickets. They just swept the Mariners, and they've won four straight games. They've won seven of nine. And near pick on price tag at home, bullpen edge towards the Halos as well. Hey, degenerate special, you're needing something on the West Coast, guys. I would go with the LA Angels over the Oakland Athletics. Minus 110 in that one. In recap, we got the Atlanta Braves, New York Mets. We got the under circled in that one as long as it's eight or higher. We got the Giants and the Dodgers. We're jumping on the dog here. San Francisco Giants plus 124. We got the Rays. Minus 102 is the slight dog over the Blue Jays. Baltimore Orioles on the run line over the fish. And first game we talked, eight and a hook being the total under Washington Nationals, San Diego Padres. Guys, that does it for the Thursday show. Let me know in the comments below where you agree, where you disagree, your MLB picks. Check out $5 Customer Appreciation Day at wagertalk.com. We'll be back for Friday. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for tuning in. Cash those tickets.